Week 11 of end zone. This guy, Mac Howard and the Heritage Academy Patriots with a rematch against Starkville Academy. This time, it's the playoffs, though, baby. Let's go. Heck of a matchup. We got full highlights in Tupelo on the road at Germantown in a defensive battle that came down to the wire. Could the Golden Wave rebound from their loss to Clinton? Lafayette hosting Lake Cormorant. Michael Fair's bunch trying to continue that special season on a high note. And New Hope making the trek up 45, taking on Saltillo. How does that Stillman's team do? Find out right now. WCBI Sports End Zone Show with John Sokolov, Courtney Robb, and Chris Bolton is brought to you by Wade Incorporated, Clark Beverage Group, Carl Hogan Toyota, East Mississippi Community College, and OCH Regional Medical Center. Welcome into week 11 of End Zone. We've got regular season wrapping up, first round of playoffs, and second round of playoffs. I'm John Sokoloff, joined by Courtney Rob. Now, Courtney, our game of the week, a team that you spent a lot of time with this summer and talking about their potential. You were one of the first on there. I'll give you your props for that. Heritage Academy hosting Starkville Academy. And how special is this Patriots team? Listen, I'm not going to brag, except I'm going to brag and say that. <laughs> I know a good team when I see them, and that is what I saw when I went and saw Heritage Academy practicing this summer with just the experience of Mac Howard, Sean Harrison, as well as their head coach. And, of course, this is a team that's made it to a state title. This is a team that's won a state championship and had – Every plan to make it back again this year and this time win it once again. And there was honestly never a doubt in my mind from watching them in that opening game to week two to week three that they were going to be able to get it done. Tonight was just the first and indication really that that is something they're really striving for and going to be able to do. Definitely. And they had a familiar foe, Starkville Academy, a team they beat pretty handedly in September. So second time around, how'd they do? Let's find out. WCBI's High School Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Carl Hogan Toyota in Columbus. All right. Now, what are your thoughts on this blue RAV4, Courtney? Well, here's the question. The shade. Is this Heritage Academy blue or is this Starkville Academy blue? It's a little bit of different. It's a little darker, some, somewhere in between, but those seats were nice. I like the, le uh, the, the gray suit seats there. And Starkville Academy looking to snap a six-game losing streak to Heritage. Second round of the playoffs. End of the first quarter, Mac Howard finding Trey Nahr down the sidelines, pushed out at the one-yard line. Second quarter, fourth and goal. Howard rolling on out, finding Mitchell Woodard. How good has this kid been this year, Courtney? I mean, so good. So good. I mean, so reliable as well, making it a 7-0 game. Pat's ball again, fourth and goal at the one-yard line. Eli Demon direct snap, throwing a pass to Woodard for his second touchdown. More consistency there, 14-0 Pat's league. But... Starkville's like, all right, you guys ran it all over us the first time. We ain't going down without a fight here. Futrol finding Wyatt Bruce for the touchdown. 14-6 Heritage. Less than two minutes left in the first half. Howard fumbling the snap. Vols recover a takeover inside the pass. 40-14-9 Heritage at the break. All right, let's go to the fourth quarter. 24-12 Pats. Howard dropping back. Absolute bomb. Absolute dime. Right to Woodard again for a huge play. That could be a top five play there. Just a spectacular one. And then to cap off the drive, Howard with the QB keeper. Runs it in for the touchdown 31-12 lead. Starkville ended up falling to Heritage by that margin. Our Chris Bolton was there. He's got more. Chris, what do you got? Early on in this ballgame, you could tell that Heritage Academy was coming fresh off of bye week. The Patriots struggled. Their first drive of the ball game had a three and out. And then to close the first half, they had an uncharacteristic turnover leading to three points by Starkville Academy. It was a 14-9 ball game at halftime. But all that changed in the second half. Heritage putting up 17 points. They get the win 31-12 and end up advancing to the next round of the playoffs. I think, you know, they're a good team, uh, and you add on top of they're always fundamentally sound and well coached. Uh, I felt like we were a little sleepy at the beginning off the bye week, a little out of our routine, but um, came out second half, went on a minute and a half drive about, scored, um, you know, and really woke up. I think once we got in our groove, we were hitting on all cylinders. Uh, I mean, we did it. We had a heck of a game. O-line did a great job. Receivers made plays. Um, running backs running the ball great. I mean, it was really good. We were clicking on all cylinders. So the season comes to a close for Starkville Academy. But on the other hand, for Heritage, they advance to the next round of playoffs. They will take on Oak Forest. 
I asked Coach Harrison after the ball game, what do you know about this Oak Forest team? He says, Chris, I have a better chance of telling you what I will have for lunch tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure come next Friday, he and his staff will have a great game plan schemed up for those guys. That will wrap things up for me here at Heritage Academy in Columbus. Chris Bolton, WCBI Sports. An impressive showing by Heritage, and it really looks like a team that could end up competing for that championship. Yeah, John, we talk a lot about Mac Howard and how good he's been this season, but also let's credit the offensive weapons just around him from Nar to Dement to Woodard, all just great receivers and everything for him this year that's been, you know, contributing to the fact that they have a great offensive team this year. Definitely, and look at that bomb at the end of that highlight there in that fourth quarter I mean if you're a guy like Mac Howard and you're able to heave it deep like that and just having that security blanket knowing that I'm throwing to a couple of ballers right now it's got to make things much easier for the quarterback no question but some six and five a action why don't we get into it a little bit Tupelo Germantown why not how about this season finale for these two both teams really getting after it it was a defensive battle Jeremiah Harrell running for his life he gets brought down for the sack Tupelo's offense then gets going in the second half here Harrell hits Jabori Dooley for a nice pickup. And next play, Harold again this time. This time I'm going to dump it off to Quay Middlebrooks. Okay. This man putting the Jets on oh, and cutting man. up to move the chains there. Defense was stingy. Jacarius Clayton with a sack. However, Tupelo getting it done. 14-10. What a way to finish out your regular season. Definitely. And bouncing back from that loss to Clinton as well. How about Oxford, Madison Central? Paying a visit, potential playoff preview. It was all Jags, though, up 27 nothing. Opening kickoff, second half, B.J. Washington avoiding some tackles, returning it all the way to that 23-yard line. How about we go to the very next play? DeAndre Pullen's offensive line clears some space, takes advantage. Touchdown, DeAndre Madison Central, 34 nothing. Ensuing possession, Chargers trying to make something happen on third down, but the ball gets intercepted by Chris Berry. Oxford ended up falling 48 to 7. Let's get another score in here for you, though. Starkville making the trek to Grenada. The Yellow Jackets, Chris Jones and company. Congrats to them, man. Trey Petty getting it done 14 to 10. Some more action. Lafayette hosting Lake Cormorant. Commodore QB Charlie Fair gets Lafayette on the board. That's a Bonds, nice catch there. Cut the visiting Gators lead 13 7. Then they get the ball back. Fair on the screen. Finds Mikai Reed Jones with a catch. He puts the Jets on to find his way into the end zone and makes it 14 13. Commodores take the lead. And the doors ship was steaming with all boilers. A minute and a half to go in the second Love quarter. Story. Fair again to the air. This time, Cooper Mitzi weaved his way in there. How about that? Doors led 21 13. The Gators tried to answer before half. Less than 30 seconds. Throwing a bomb, sending up a pair, prayer, Kylan Eggerson with the INT there. Coming up big to make it 21-13 at the half, and the Doors got it done, 28-19. Look at that, impressive win for them. How about New Hope going on up to Saltillo? Trojans ball in the first drive of the game. Ty Crowell, read option, picking up 15, and a first down. How about we go later in the drive, Ladarius Tate. This guy's got a lot of talent, goes right up the middle. Then the big boys do the work, and then he gets a nice little score there to put his team on the board. 7-0 still in the first. Crowell looking for Richard Guy. Finds him for six. 14-0 New Hope. Trojans dominate 42-7. Let's get a quick score in here for you. West Point was taking on Columbus last night, and Chris Chambliss and company put up 49 points against a good Falcon defense, winning it. 49 to 26. How about Shannon and Louisville? How about him? Louisville defending 4 8 state champs, hosting Shannon. Second quarter, third and goal. Demarcus shines on the QB keeper, gets in for the three yard touchdown. They go for two, that's no good, so cuts the lead to three. Louisville's turn now. Emery James with the handoff, breaking a tackle. Oh man. This man getting loose. Top five potential, you think? Look at those Jets, John. You're not catching that, man. No like, you can more try, not. but uh, let me tell you, you're he out of luck. He threw up the one. He threw up the one at the end. He knew it. That was a 79 yard touchdown run. Extra point would be good. So the Wildcats go up 22 to 12. 
And after a Shannon three and out, Louisville with the ball. Jace Hudspeth back to pass, throws a fade here to the corner, a nice one too. The big fella, Jarvis Rush with a nice catch and grab. Too little. 12 yard touchdown for him. Louisville goes up 29-12, and Louisville gets it done, 37-12 the final. All right, Kosciuszko at Caledonia, first round 4A playoffs. Courtney, a surprise onside kick. We love to see these. We, we do. We do. We love to see them. you got it. You, good game play, switch it up. Oh, yeah. And, the, and it pays off. Yeah, being aggressive in the playoffs, man. Caledonia trying to make some noise. How about on defense they did? Tip pass, intercepted here. Karsten Gallette. Coming up with the pick, going deep into Kosciuszko territory. We know how explosive Caledonia's offense has been all year. If they're deep in the red zone, you know they're going to cash in. You know they're going to cash in. And uh, you know who would? Well, they got to the one-yard line. Daniel Wilburn was like, all right, big fellas, pump me in there. And he got in 4-6, put his team up 17-0. Caledonia ends up winning big 31-14. to Yeah, I believe that was their first playoff win in yep. school history. Yep. How about that? Big one for the Cavs, big year. They won 31-24, actually, excuse me. But Choctaw Central and Wamba Indians stop on the fourth down. But Ty Davis finding Tay Chandler, who breaks two defenders' ankles and cuts it back up the middle for the first down. Still no score late in the first quarter. Jariah Jimmy rolls out on third and long, but he's swarmed by the Itawamba defense. Hayden Hankins, the first one there. Ensuing punt, Cashton Grisham can't handle the low snap. So it's tripped up. Tripped up indeed. Hankins again who drops him, setting up the Indians with great field position. And they would end up turning it into the game's first touchdown. Itawamba scoring 28 to 14 over Choctaw Central. You know Central. what they say, I Itawamba, you Itawamba, he, she, we Itawamba. But how about we get to Ponotoc and Gentry in their first round of 4A action. Second quarter and following a Gentry touchdown. Nick Townsend on the return. He's putting the Jets on oh, too. Man. Trying to cut through there, but gets brought down at about the 40. The Rams were up 7-0. So same drive Townsend handing it off to Andrew Berry. He's able to bulldoze his way there and just get enough for the first down to keep the play and the drive alive. And that would set up this next play. Barry with the ball going right up the gut, leaping right into the camera. We love to see it. And oh, into yeah. the end zone as well. That would knock the game up at seven. And man, this one went down to the wire. And Ponotok was the victor, 35-34. Them grapes advance. Them grapes. Let's get a few more quick scores for you. Moorville ended up falling to West Lauderdale. 72 to 15. Yikes. And South Pontotoc got blanked at Clarksdale. 41 nothing. We're not even close to being done here on end zone. Coming up next, Knox City County. This guy, Chauncey Triplett, hosting Boonville. There's probably a top five playing these highlights. That, that's all I'm going to say. Amory taking on Mantachi, Ken Adams and Company. And then also Winona hosting by Halia with Gary and Townsend. All right, Boonville and Knoxby County, welcome back to end zone. Shanklin for Knoxby. I mean, look at this run. Also, Courtney, thoughts on the jerseys? I love them. I think okay. they're clean. I think they're fresh. They're new. They're exciting. They're the moment. They are. And you know what else was a great moment there tonight? Our Ronnie Smith getting honored before the game. Congrats to Ronnie. And here's Boonville quarterback L.J. Shumpert. Nice little 10-yard run. Knoxville County's defense was great all night long, Courtney. Just stuffing them at the line of scrimmage, Boonville, every chance they got. You know what they say, look good, feel good. That's right. Here's a nice little, uh, nice little big, I mean, this offense was really rolling all night long with the Tigers, and they've had a lot of turnover here, but I mean, they've had a very impressive season. They ended up getting it done 24 to seven. Yes, the fighting Ronnie Smith yes. pulling off the dub. Well, how about we get to some more action? Amory hosting Mantachi up 27 with under three left in the second quarter. Running back Charleston French up the middle, cuts to the outside, moves the chains. Couple plays later, finishes it off, going pretty much untouched into Too the end easy. zone. Makes it 34 0 Panthers. In closing seconds of the half, Mustang trying to put a drive together, but Jacob Hawks picked off by Jarquez Ivy. Setting up the Panthers at midfield in seven seconds left in the half. Oh man, Hail Mary! They get the touchdown, 30-yard touchdown pass. 
Amory, too much for Tachi Tech in this one. Amory gets it done 54 to 6. Hail Mary. We don't see those that often, huh? We don't. No, Marks Palmer in Choctaw County. Chargers host in early on for Palmer. Quintavian Davis gets the snap, scrambles to his right, but loses the football. The charge is taken over. Trace Beard falling on top of it. Later on for Choctaw. B.B. Kennedy, he had one of the best stiff arms we had seen all season long on end zone. And this kid's had a spectacular season, breaking some tackles. Picks up an 18-yard gain, then later first and goal. Don't get close to the goal line with this guy on your team, because he'll get you right in the end zone. That was a little too easy. He, he was expecting that to be a little tougher. After a Palmer three and out, Choctaw with the ball back, second down, Connor Jewell. Looking for Clark Crowley in the corner for a nice gain, get some good yardage later on. Guess who? B.B. Kennedy again. He gets it. This is from 15 yards out. This one a little too easy for him again. Second touchdown of the night. Chalk top 34 to 6 at the break. They ended up winning this one 41 to 20. Winona and Vihalia. Oh yeah, you know. You know who's in here? Darian Townsend. You know he is. But but we'll get to that a little later. You know why? Because there's a nice punt return here in the Vihalia. Why no in a game? A couple cutbacks and, and getting it. We looked like he was going to score, but got wrapped up deep in the red zone. But now, I mean, okay, so they're in the red zone, so you're probably going to give it off to your running back. So who do you expect to make some noise here, Courtney? Ooh, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Darian Townsend? You're right, you're right. Wow, you're smart. And he got in there for the touchdown. This was all Winona, 52 to zip. Let's get to some more scores from the evening. Really quickly, just want to say the Houston Senatobia game was postponed till Saturday. I think we'll get to more of this later, but Houston unfortunately uh, had one of their players pass away. Our thoughts and prayers go out to them. We'll get to more of that later. Let's continue on with some of those scores. Nettleton falls to Kasu 32 to 7. Aberdeen taking on Water Valley. Aberdeen gets it done 12 to 9. Belmont at Jay-Z George. Jay-Z George tops Belmont 22 to 8. Let's get to some more action. East Webster taking on Coahoma County. We'll kick things off in the first quarter. David Palmer scrambling. Weaving his way through the pack here. Jeez, this is impressive play, man. Yeah, going to get some kid. good yardage. However, the Panthers will later oh, turn the ball over on downs. East Webster now running back. Bryston Johnson, he's going to break loose. And that's going to be enough for a first down for the Wolverines. However, they would end up fumbling the ball away. So, Zy Ford blocks a Coahoma punt. Trace Helms catches the ball in the air at the 10-yard line and walks that right in for the touchdown. The Wolverines go up 7-0. We love special team scores. And East Webster, man, oh man, they blaked Coahoma County 47-0. East Webster, why don't we urch it up, as the great uh, Courtney Robb likes to say. I do. We Co love to urch it up. Courtney, they couldn't wait to urch it up. This is the opening kickoff right here. And Hayden Roberts gets all the way to the outside and explodes for a massive touchdown to Urch everything up in style right away. 6 nothing. They went for two. They got it. Hayden Frazier bulldozed over everyone for an 8 nothing lead. After holding O'Bannon to a three and out, they get the ball back. Riley Williams carries it near the 10-yard line. East Union was up 14 nothing a little later, and they ended up winning it 43-7. to Some more scores for you. Calhoun City and Northside in a squeaker. Northside getting it done. 22 to 20 and Eupora at Charleston. This one, Charleston is the victor, 46 to 18. Coming up next here on end zone, Wes Lounds. Man, the Panthers have had one heck of a season. They were at Vardaman and also Oak Hill Academy, taking on Tri-County Academy. Welcome back to the end zone. Vardaman and West Lounge facing off for some Thursday night action. The final regular season game of the season. First quarter, first drive, and Frederick Rice bulldozes his way in for the touchdown. Panthers up 6-0. Doesn't take too long for the Rams to respond. Chipper Drake Moore finds Evan Edmondson. Takes care of the rest. Vardaman misses the extra point, though, so it's knotted at 6. And the Panthers were feeling it. Jaquavius Tate takes the handoff. Rolls to his right. Finds the house. West Lounge goes for two again. This time they get it. 
Panthers go up 14-6 and the Panthers dominated to get the win 56-2-6. All right, Thrasher at Smithville. Hasn't been the, the best season for Thrasher. Trying to get something going here and Fabian Sproles. Nice little 10 yard run to, to give Smithville a little bit of juice. And then Smithville QB Tyler Lamb. Look at this beautiful pass to Christopher Christian. Sheesh, and he dives over that pylon for six. Smithville's defense looked pretty good as Thrasher was trying to get something going. Well, they got the nice unis too, those powder blues. I do like we those. We love the powder blues. We love the powder blues. The offensive production wasn't that great on that play. They get stuff behind and then Dylan Christian right here gets to that outside. A few cuts, a 35-yard touchdown. Smithville wins big, 33 zip. The Baldwin Bearcats hosting Leland. Some playoff action. Second quarter, Bearcats already up 21-0. And quarterback Jamari Marshall finds Graylin Watson. They pick up a first down. Then Josiah Christian taking the handoff. He's going to break into the clear. Look at the man go, putting the speed on, and takes it deep into Leland territory. Then the handoff going to Braylon Pippen goes wide and fights for some extra yardage, but stopped just short of the goal line. Defense coming up there. And then Terrell Robinson finishing it off, though, finds his way into the end zone for the touchdown, made it 28 0, and the Bearcats came away with the victory 41 12. All right, let's get some more scores for you quickly here. Biggersville took down Ashland, 47-0. French camp top Leak County, 33-24. Hamilton falling at Sebastopol, 32-15. Ethel squeaking past Knox of Hater, 30-27. Oklahoma beat Faulkner, 38-8. TCPS taking down Byers, 44-14. And coming up next year, we'll have some more MIS schools highlights and West Alabama updates as well. Welcome back to End Zone Tri County Academy at Oak Hill Academy. Tri County up 20 to 14. Mark Early scoring from the three. Two point conversion good, and the Raiders now down 28 to 14. Vic Bard breaking loose. Finally knocked out of bounds here at the very end at the one yard line. Gurley would score on the next play, 34-14. Tri-County lead. They ended up winning it 56-14. Let's get some more scores for you in here. Winona lost at Greenville Christian, 50 to nothing. Claiborne fell to Calhoun Academy, 50 to 8. Let's get some West Alabama action in here. 51 to 21. Aliceville fell at a beat Eider, 46 to 6. And Sullivan took down Pisgah 52 to 38. Gordo, Tanner, Bailey and Company winning 37-7. And Tanner beat Lamar County 35 to 27. And before we get to our teams of the night in the next block, we just want to say that our hearts and thoughts are absolutely with the whole Houston Hilltopper football family with the passing of Jamarcus Hall this morning at his home. Just a completely devastating story that we reported on. You could get the details on WCBI.com, but just a heartbreaking situation for that whole family, everyone involved. But we'll be right back. All right, Courtney, who's your team of the night? I'm going with Louisville. Got to show them some love. The Power Cats. How about Tupelo for me? Bouncing back for the loss against Clinton, getting it done this week. That's all we have for Enzo. We'll see you next week. WCBI Sports End Zone Show with John Sokolov, Courtney Robb, and Chris Bolton is brought to you by Wade Incorporated, Park Beverage Group, Carl Hogan Toyota, East Mississippi Community College, and OCH Regional Medical Center.